The first American people loved the land. They held it in simple reverence. And in some Americans today, that spirit is reborn. This is South Coast Botanic Garden in California. Once this was a dumping ground for trash and litter. Community volunteers cleaned, planted, and reclaimed it. And there the land is good again. But all around us are reminders of how far we still have to go. So everyone must get involved now. To contact the Keep America Beautiful team nearest you, write Keep America Beautiful, 99 Park Avenue, New York, New York. People start pollution. People can stop it. Say goodbye to lover boy. Ah! Bye bye, Romeo. Daisy was dating. All right, boy, fetch, and I'll give you a treat. Come here. Yeah. Good boy. Here's your treat. A story starts with my great grandfather. It's a story of strength, triumph, and oats. He left his hard working folks and set out in search of his destiny in America. It wasn't always easy. He tried his hoof at a number of jobs. Ouch. Oh, my. Didn't always go so well. But in time, Great Grandpa found his true calling. I know because three generations later, I'm running in his footsteps. My name is Jake, and I am a Budweiser Clydesdale. Thank you, Great Grandpa. I love this country. From the very start, he exhibited the heart and mind of a champion, described by those close to him as a foal with a commanding presence. It wasn't long before Barbaro demonstrated those qualities and more for all the world to see. He had great athletic ability and he had a, a heart that was, you know, bigger than a house. He wanted to win. He, had, he was a real competitor. He refused to lose regardless of the surface, and his connections felt Barbaro might have a destiny reserved for the select few. Before his brilliant display in the Kentucky Derby, we were yet to be captivated by his power and athleticism. But on May 6th, Barbaro's performance inspired awe. And Barbaro is running away! It's Edgar Prado aboard, and Barbaro is going to win this Derby by six lengths. 
a winning margin not seen in 60 years. His breathtaking performance left little doubt as to who we had in our midst. There was talk of not just a Preakness win, but a triple crown. It seemed his best performance was yet to come. But it did not. Oh, Barbaro, Barbaro has pulled up in the opening furlong. He's got a fracture above and below the ankle. The day after his ill-fated run in the Preakness, it took six hours of surgery to insert 27 screws and a metal plate in Barbaro's leg in a desperate effort to save his life. He's feeling very good. He's walking very well in the lab. He's got absolutely normal vital signs today. All of his, his temperature, pulse, respiration, attitude, appetite. He's doing very well. Barbaro's newest challenge touched so many of us deeper than his races ever could. Hundreds of get well cards and gifts poured into the hospital. Symbols of a nation riveted by his fate. A visit by his jockey, Edgar Prado, seemed to be a tonic for them both. In fact, Barbaro's recuperation was going so well, he watched his buddies compete in the Belmont Stakes. While his prognosis was guarded, this champion seemed to be refusing to lose once again. In July, Barbaro's fractured leg became infected and the plates and screws had to be replaced. He transferred too much weight to his left hind leg, his good leg, and he developed a severe disease in that foot called laminitis. 80% of his left hind hoof had to be removed. When the dreaded laminitis struck, the Jacksons and Dr. Richardson considered euthanasia. But somehow, Barbaro continued to battle through his ordeal in good spirits. By late summer, his fractured leg was healing, and he was comfortable enough in his other leg to be taken outside for regular grazing. By winter, there was even talk of moving Barbaro out of the hospital into a farm in a warmer climate. But in the last few weeks, complications developed in both hind feet. Barbaro was in pain, and the Jacksons simply would not permit their gallant colt to suffer. In the end, as many had expected from the start, the odds simply proved too steep for Barbaro. For while Barbaro did indeed have a destiny, it was a different one than we saw in his races. His true potential on the racetrack or in the breeding shed may have gone unfulfilled, but his legacy will forever carry on through work and research conducted in his name at the University of Pennsylvania in the hope that future champions might fulfill their destinies. For that and for the wonderful moments Barbaro left us with, the sport of thoroughbred racing will be forever grateful.